Hi, this is Pat Moorhead and we are in Las Vegas here for a 6.5 and we are on the road with our co-host Daniel Newman and of course Nicole DeGaulle from Qualcomm who runs the automotive business. How you doing guys? It is great to be here on the road. It is a little bit weird uh, here in Vegas. Uh, biggest event of the year uh, every year and it's still a huge event but yes. it's a little different because we're kind of just settling into this hybrid world and this is going to be one of those true hybrid events. Uh, Nicole, it's great to see you man. How are you? We decided to brave it out and very happy to see both of you here. No, super excited. So uh, we literally just stepped out of the Qualcomm press conference which should have been called the Qualcomm Automotive press conference because First of all, most of the time was dedicated to automotive, but there were so many announcements. I may have received five to six press releases out there. So maybe the, the, the first thing to jump into, and, and by the way, first of all, congratulations on the success. I think I saw a new number, $13 billion in backlog and design wins. Um, I'm gonna ask you to pick, uh, of all the announcements, what was the most significant announcement uh, of, of the day? And we're going to talk about the other ones, but... How does look, he ask him to prioritize? I mean, you know, it's hard to prioritize. He loves all of you. He loves look, the whole his kids. We, I had, understand that. we had a fantastic 2021. I think it was uh, really... Uh, we tracked the momentum in the automotive industry down to our business. You mentioned the pipeline number, and yeah. I think uh, that reflects it. Uh, there is so much of change going on in this business. Uh, one thing I'm very proud of is that we've been working with so many automakers and we had a number of them actually announce the products that they're going to be launching in 2022 and that's at the show. That's unique. So Volvo announced that. We have the GM press conference coming up tomorrow. Excited about that. We made announcements with Honda. Right. Uh, we made a big announcement on the Snapdragon digital chassis, which we are very proud of because we are quite unique in that we can bring so much of technology to the car and right. we have been organizing the portfolio to really be something that makes sense for automakers to start to embrace horizontally. We had a number of automakers that showed their momentum and support behind that. So yeah, there's just a lot going on and uh, yeah, su super excited to be I here. I love how he, you asked him to have one and he got five. And you know what, that's what a good leader does though. All of his children have been represented <laughs> here. now. I watched CA, Cristiano Amon, CEO, and his excitement and enthusiasm during this press conference. And I've been kind of watching this now. We saw it at Investor Day. We saw it at Summit. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're now seeing it here at CES. The, the trend lines are consistent. Very excited about automotive. Very excited about ADAS. Very excited about modularity. You talk about digital chassis. What I heard and what I said to the market is I said, you cannot underweight how important this modularity is. We've seen a lot of black box approaches to doing ADAS or to doing autom autonomous vehicles. But what Qualcomm is doing, you guys truly believe it's different. Talk about why this digital chassis is so important. Well, you know, so if you think about the decision making at an automaker, uh, there is a clear trend to where you have to insource key decision making. The semiconductor crisis is a very good example as to what happens when you don't know what your supply chain looks like. Even prior to the crisis, there was a huge focus. There is a huge focus in terms of what do we make ourselves and what do we buy? And uh, to be able to realistically make a difference there, you have to partner, you have to pick technology partners. You have to figure out what your digital chassis is gonna look like because electrification is simplifying yeah. the chassis overall. And it becomes a choice around semiconductor choice, semiconductor selection, the software that you're gonna run on it, your uh, cloud strategy, and uh, who you are going to partner with long term. The days of making a decision for you know the next generation and then rethinking it three years later or starting to think about the next design the moment you award this one, those days are gone. And uh, you know we've been leading in the 5G space, in the telematics space for a long time. Infotainment was new to us five years ago. We lead in that space today. We made our acquisition of uh, Vionier public uh, October of 2021, which now gets us on to the ADAS roadmap. We made our BMW announcement. If you, th if you, if you connect the dots, what it really comes down to is automakers have to be able to have flexibility to differentiate their product, and they want to be able to work with the companies that are going to allow that to happen. 
uh, that requires scale, that requires uh, experience in working with a large number of customers, and that is something that we have done through our history, through our, uh, you know, through all of the growing up that Qualcomm has done in all of the ecosystem that we are part of. So it feels like a very natural fit for us. And all the conversations we have with our customers lead us to believe that uh, this horizontal strategy is going to be critical for automakers to have as the kind of as the foundation for their thought process going forward. Yeah, horizontal is 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 big. Not only is there scale, but also if you look at the R and D, if you're just a vertical play, the amount of R and D that you would need to invest to keep up to bring out the innovations that the consumers and the car makers want seems like that is that is a non-starter and it's incredible because vertical was the way to do this for the past 25 years uh, so today you you announced a vision platform that fits inside of the the snapdragon ride platform and um it it really seemed to me to kind of um fill uh some of the gaps that that may have have been there but it also to me was a, a big explana exclamation point for the vnir uh, acquisition. Can you talk about the strategic nature of, of the new Vision platform? Well, you know, we've been very open about the strategy that we have had. We announced Snapdragon Ride at CES 2020. And uh, at that point in time, it was mostly a hardware focused strategy. We announced an SOC, we announced an accelerator. You will hear more about those tomorrow because we are essentially going to put those into cars in 2022. So if you think about time to market, we will actually have five nanometer based uh, SOCs driving Super Cruise and GM vehicles in 2022. Not something that many of our competitors can claim. But it was clear to us that having a stack is going to be important. And uh, it came down to do we organically build our own stack and how much time would that take? Or should we partner and get a bit of a lead there? And we looked at the uh, we looked at the options we had in front of us. Vionier was a company that we had been working with as a customer for some time. And uh, they were a trusted stack supplier to Daimler, to Volvo, to Subaru, many others. And of course, uh, you know, this is one of those uh, scenarios where you need to invest to keep up with all of the change, all of the requirements that are coming up. So we got into a commercial partnership uh, with the intent that at the right time we would obviously have to make the right decision there. But we started to work with OEMs and we started to be very open with OEMs on what our strategy would ultimately be. And so, you know, long story short, things fit in quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, you know, Magna forced our hand in terms of what we had to go do and uh, we acted uh, and, uh, you know, uh, let's say we threaded a number of needles over the last 18 months or so. Uh, but it's come together very nicely because the Snapdragon Ride Vision System announcement is basically a response to hey, the market needs alternatives to uh, perception solutions. Uh, we know a thing or two about silicon. Uh, the arrival stack is something that we believe in, our customers believe in it. Right. And that kind of completes the uh, portfolio. Yeah, the, the, I have to tell you, I, I am still amazed um, in 2020 when your folks asked me, hey, um, do you want to go take a ride in a car that we had for ADAS? My first response, and I like to pretend that I'm, you know, I understand what's going on in this industry. I didn't even know you were working on, on this. And somebody pops the trunk, and it was a test vehicle, but still, I went for a ride a near three CESs ago, and here you are making uh, announcements. And I'll, I'll admit a second thing that when I looked at the time frame of it, and I, I, I was thinking there was just no way that, that this is you know, gonna be a short-term affair here. And then boom, uh, GM, right? And then boom, uh, BMW. And, and here we have you know, others that, that, that are on the way. So. I don't know if you were farther along <laughs> three years ago that I gave you credit for, or you just got so much done between then and now. Yeah, you know, we've, I mean, look, I think you know a little bit of Qualcomm. We are a systems company. We didn't wake up two years ago to jump in into this. We have known about what we had to go do. I think the complexity with ADAS is that, uh, you know, we are very customer centric in our decision making. So for us, it's very important that when we will actually move forward, 
it's going to be with the validation that when a marquee customer makes a decision, yeah. it represents something to the rest of the ecosystem. And what was important for us is to not just understand the technology, but also what we would have to have in place for customers to actually select us over what was available. You know, right. we have competitors, they're good companies, they're solid players, a lot of experience in this space. So we have a lot of respect for the competitors that we are up against. But, you know, we've been looking at computer vision for, you know, over a decade. We've been investing in safety IP for a long time. We understand the requirements for cameras uh, in, uh, uh, in, a, in an ACL environment. It was also very important to understand functional safety from a software perspective. That was one of the reasons to acquire uh, the uh, arrival assets from Vionia, because that is a very unique set of requirements that are going to get even more complex over time as this market becomes, you know, from a regulatory perspective, highly scrutinized. You have to know how to write the software you need to. So a number of pieces had to really fall in place. And then of course, there was an acquisition involved. Uh, there were some big uh, deals that we had to have in place. But uh, the plans have been, you know, we've been, we've been aspiring to get to this point for a number of years. And with the policy challenges that are gonna go on, a company like Qualcomm is very well positioned, having done this with Spectrum, having done this in, with communications, you know, we're gonna see some of those similar challenges over the future years as we start to roll infrastructure in place, right, for everything from electrical, electri yeah. electrification to autonomous and AI. Uh, so there's a lot of things that the company is pretty well positioned that maybe not even necessarily getting credit because you've done so well on the, the product side. Now, I, I put out a market watch predictions piece uh, for 22, and I, and I basically talked about autonomous vehicles, and I did name the company to watch as Qualcomm. Um, Congratulations, I always feel Thank you. like that's in stake, uh, you know, in play when I write about you. But uh, in all serious, one of the things that I think I'm, I'm most excited about and just like to maybe wrap on this note and hear from you is, what is the potential with your, you know, we talked about modularity, we talked about the vision, we talked about all these partnerships, but the timetable to me is the one thing I think everyone's competing for. The companies like GM, Honda, they, they went from seven to 10 year cycles, now to five and three year cycles. You're gonna have 20% of a bomb as semiconductors in the future years. These, comp these, these vehicles in the future of them are gonna be dependent on semiconductors enabling everything from that infotainment. I mean, you look at the images Cristiano shared of a car, the roof is you know now is now <laughs> is a, a screen. The windows are a display. In front of you, it is is a display. Driving is going to become mobility. You guys are at the at the forefront of this. But from an innovation standpoint, Nicole, how fast is this process going to get? Or is this going to be like devices at some point in the future where you're literally flipping? Where generations of vehicles go from changing every few years to two launches a year? I mean, how quick do semiconductors enable this to happen? I think it's going to depend a lot upon uh, which automakers you're talking about. I think some are going to move at consumerish speeds because they're just used to much faster cycles. The other complexity though also is that the life cycle of an electric vehicle platform is much longer than combustion engine platforms. And so the design of the digital chassis is going to have to contemplate uh, how much upgrade can you plan in the silicon that you deploy in the first generation versus actually having the ability to uh, you know, get maybe a second platform in place. A Look, PGA I think we are video. in the very, very early stages. We are in the very early stages of uh, all of these changes. But what is fascinating is that there are so many different types of customers to go work with. So there are so many different tiers of the market. And uh, ultimately, the consumer has to make a decision around uh, what type of product works for them. For us, what is very important is to work with a very broad set of customers. That's why you saw our partnership with Renault, an example of somebody that actually has access to a lot of breadth. You saw the uh, partnerships on the digital chassis itself, from GM and BMW to a number of leading Chinese automakers. And that basically gives us a very good uh, barometer on where the market is headed, what are the types of things we have to go make an impact on. Good place to end here. Uh, Nicole, I appreciate your time and congratulations on, uh, first of all, not stealthing your capabilities in, in, in ADAS, but first of all, uh, building a, a very impressive uh, telematics and infotainment business uh, where you know, we're in the tens of billions of dollars on that, but, all, but next extending it to ADAS and after that uh, L3, uh, L, L3 and, and beyond. And, 
two to three, I think three new uh, customer announcements today. Uh, one new platform uh, announcement, which is, uh, which is pretty awesome. So congratulations on everything and thanks for joining us here thank for the 6.5 uh, Insider. Thank you, Pat, and thank you, Daniel. On the road, and that's why they were on the watch list. That's right. Yeah, and by the way, for, for the record, uh, I was on uh, CNB Tech Check uh, on the last day of the year, cited Qualcomm as, as my number one uh, semiconductor pick, uh, and a lot of it had to do with, at least the way I explained it, was uh, growth in automotive. So you got to make us look smart. Fantastic. Nicole. I think thanks. that was the point. But thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. See you yeah, in 22. Yeah, so this is Pat Moorhead and Daniel Newman here for a 6.5 on the road. We are here, we are live, and we are glad to be here in person. Uh, take care and check out all of our insiders, our weekly 6.5 uh, podcast. Have a great day.